What's up, everybody? Episode 135, Bar Down Breakdown. We are back and we are chilling with our homie Ian from Empty. Uh, Empty is a great band on Solid State Records. Uh, they've got uh, Made of Fire coming out in uh, just about a month on October 22nd. So uh, super stoked to have you, bud. Um, welcome to the show. What's going on, y'all? Stoked to be here. Stoked to be here. Awesome. Hell yeah. Man. So, Ian, you're currently in south carolina is that correct yeah my sound was cutting out for a second but i think it is back yep you're good yeah so you're in okay, cool. south yeah we're good so you're in south carolina myrtle beach area oh. i don't think i'm getting any sound from mike on when he was talking i'm hearing you can though you hear tommy me? yeah can i can you hear, hear me mm-hmm hmm. I'm hearing Micah. Uh, it's a little strange, but uh, so uh, <clears throat> we'll kind of keep working on that. But so uh, Mike was asking, uh, so he he was just reiterating, you guys are from uh, uh, the Myrtle Beach area, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we are. Dirty Myrtle. Dirty Myrtle. Yeah, man. Uh, no, that's awesome. Um, I've uh, I've only actually been to Myrtle Beach, I think, like once ever. And uh, it was super cool. Uh, but, you know, I, I remember being like kind of really touristy, which I guess kind of it can have that vibe of uh, yeah. being from being from the area. Are there like, you know, like spots that like, you know, only locals hit that like, don't get all of that, you know? Yeah, for sure. So like all the tourist areas kind of like really just on the beach, like on ocean Boulevard and Myrtle beach all across the coast. Yeah. I mean the, the further inland you go and honestly like 25 minutes, like the restaurants and everything are going to be way better, way less cool. tourist. The nice. prices are going to be normal. Like, uh -huh. I mean, if you go down on the beach, I mean, it's ridiculous, like Las Vegas and New Orleans, you know? Yeah, I get it. I mean, you know, but every every, every area kind of has that sort of deal. I'm uh, mm -hmm. I'm from Orlando. So, okay, you know, so. So I, Disney Universal yeah. all in that area is all crazy. And then they have this big strip of. Uh, of um, I'm sure. It's like a five mile strip called International Drive. That's also crazy like that. And yeah. Every every store that you go to is just like Disney T-shirts, two for yeah. 20. And it's, it's kind of crazy, but. Um, no, it's cool, man. I think this, uh, to be honest with you, might be the first uh, band we've spoken to from South Carolina, unless I'm wrong. No, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. There's not, you know, there are rad bands here, but if we're yeah. talking about comparison to even surrounding us north in North Carolina and Georgia, I mean, got slim pickings here. Well, we did talk with Jake from August Burns Red, who I, I think he's Dang, technically I'm from. I'm still not getting any of him. That's weird. Yeah, I'm getting you crystal clear. All right. Interesting. That's <laughs> strange, man. Uh, it's it's so funny because I'm I'm hearing Mikey come through, but nonetheless, um, you know, you get it's funny. We'll we'll just let him talk, and then you can just answer whatever question you think he asked. So Word. that'll be good. <laughs> want to hear his? I want to hear his voice, man. I feel bad. <laughs> well, we'll keep we'll keep testing it, see what's going Word. on. But uh, so um. Just to kind of kick us off, so, uh, you know, being, you know, a band on Solid State who have been like a seminal, uh, yeah, it looks like he popped out. He's probably going to come back in. But uh, so, you know, Solid State being like a seminal record label for, you know, metalcore and hard rock and alternative music, um, you guys being a part of that, you know, they have such, like I said, a, a deep lineage and uh, a lot of which kind of ties into Furnace Fest, which is as we're recording this. Uh, day three is happening over at Sloss in, in Birmingham. Um, so as far as Furnace Fest is concerned, like, are you kind of hip to that? Like, are you familiar with like, you know, the bands and stuff oh, that are playing? I couldn't be preaching to the choir more. I mean, there's yeah. pro other than like a few of the newer guys opening, mm -hmm. but every single band on there, I'd say I'm almost a fan of or yeah. know a bunch of songs. Like that's my like early 2000s, kind of like hardcore, yeah. post-hardcore emo. Like oh, yeah. for me in middle school, that was just like top tier. That's what I love to listen to. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I would have loved to gone if time would have permitted. I mean, that yeah. was like the lineup. Like, I don't think there could have been a, a better festival with like Same. a lineup that more encapsulated what I like to listen to. Same. Absolutely the same. And uh, I have like a tremendous amount of FOMO from not being there. I've got oh, a couple, yeah. couple of friends on my timeline, uh, you know, uh, Facebook timeline that uh, have, um, you know, that, that are there and have shared some yeah. pictures. One of my buddies, uh, 
shared a picture of uh, 18 visions playing just as like the sun was going down. And I seen some, some videos of, uh, of, of converge uh, under oath. Apparently they played uh, when the sun sleeps for the first time in like, Oh my God. Almost for, 20 years. Yeah. Literally four years. I've been saying they need to play it again. Cause yep. people will go off for it, man. And, I, but I mean, and I knew that like furnace fest would have some of those special moments. And like, I haven't even oh, dialed yeah. into like some of the other bands that have played, but I mean, uh, you know, my biggest thing was um, I'm a huge, huge beloved fan. We've had oh yeah, a, that's their first show back yep. since like early 2000s since they yeah. broke up. And we had uh, we had Dusty uh, from Beloved on uh, way back, probably about nice. eight or nine months ago, and he was kind of giving us uh, a little bit of uh, info on it because you know uh, originally Furnace Fest would have been last year. And mm-hmm. they ended up uh, postponing it to this year because of the pandemic. But uh, you know, he was giving us some insight on that and, you know, how, how they, you know, were approached and like, uh, you know, the guys that were running Furnace Fest, like what they really wanted to accomplish. And I mean, it's such a great thing, you know. Uh, yeah, I the, mean, Chad Johnson's an awesome guy. I mean, he, yeah. I mean, he speaks for himself with his reputation from Solid State previously and yep. then everything he's done after that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, but uh, definitely a great thing. I'm, I'm definitely really excited to, you know, for the videos to kind of start to. I saw you know, that a lot drip were like into pro YouTube, shot yeah. and everything. Oh, yeah. Like they had like pro shot cameras on the wire, like spinning. It's like, we're going to get nice videos out of this thing for the people who didn't go. For sure, like, man. Yes. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that it, it kind of is like, um, uh, you know, th- those, those produced Hellfest videos, you know? I oh was, yeah. Uh, that, that's exactly the same vibe it's going to yeah. have. Man. I was at, I was at Hellfest in 2005. Nice. Um, and uh so that was the one that was at the rexplex in jersey and then uh there was like everything was shot but like the uh the dvds and stuff never came out and i think a lot of that had to do with really uh, i think i've only yeah. ever seen like oh three of hellfest if i've ever watched one yeah i think oh three and oh four are the ones that came out on the dvds and like the oh four mm-hmm. one is like the ones that are plastered all over youtube and like you know you got you know hopes fall and the red cord and dillinger and like all those videos uh but 05 is such a bummer because I think the reason that the videos never came out is there were some weird things that happened at that Hellfest, you know, the infamous Bad Luck 13 incident where like people got really badly hurt and bleachers oh, got dang. dismantled. And yeah, it was it was rough. But that's like think, the, the Woodstock version of Hellfest and the hardcore scene. That's yeah, why we couldn't man. have it no more. Exactly. But, you know, you know, uh, Furnace Fest, you know, coming in hot and uh, really can't wait to see how, how all that stuff looks. So. Um, but yeah, just to kind of like dig into that, I know, I know you said, you know, there are a lot of bands that played Furnace Fest that were you know really important to you, but like of the bands that played, could you pick like one or two that were really, I guess, important to you musically and creatively that kind of like, you know, caught you at the right time when you started being a yeah. musician and creating music? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, there's definitely a couple that are like up there compared to the rest. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, I guess first, Under Oath, I mean, that band kind of got me into heavier music. Um, sure, I really yeah. just listened to like punk rock growing up. And mm-hmm. I think when I was like 14 or 15, I heard Under Oath. I was just like so like obsessed with Aaron Gillespie's drumming at the time. Oh, yeah. And they really just like broke through for me into like listening to anything with screaming. And I've seen Under Oath twice since they've gotten back together. Awesome. Because um, I was, I'm only 23, so they were like broken up and done by the time i got into them and then they got back together which was rad Mm -hmm. but yeah uh under oath just huge influential band to me um and and the rest of the dudes in my band i mean we all love that band um Mm -hmm. poison the well um that first record is just one of the greatest metalcore albums ever Mm -hmm. um really good i know they didn't play um on like the actual sloth furnace but they played like the pre-show normie gene yeah. Like they just, they can't do any wrong for like 20 oh, yeah. plus years. They just keep putting out good albums great, and have a crazy stuff, yeah. live show. Absolutely. Um, As Cities Burn, I great know they band. played like um, their first album front to back on Furnace Fest. I yep. think yesterday or the day before mm-hmm. that, that thing's perfect front to back. Really like that. Yeah. Um, Converge, another one. I mean, going strong 20 years yep. and they're, level of quality hasn't like gone down at all like nobody's ever Agreed. seen converge the past 20 years and been like uh i think they were better in 01 no nah, they're yeah. still good as fuck 20 years mm-hmm. later yep yep so um trying to think anymore every time i die of course um, i think everybody's got to say that i mean they yeah. kill me said every time every time yep 
Mm, trying to some newer bands. Give a shout out to uh, Knock Loose and Burials, carrying the new sure. torch for heavy music. Those bands Absolutely. both rip. They do. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, I think I think as far as that, that's probably all of them. I would have liked to see a Chariot reunion, but I guess we'll have to wait longer. I'm sure we'll eventually get one. I I, I got to imagine. I mean, if we can get it, Beloved back together, we can get yeah, a Chariot show for in sure. Ten and, years. But and you know what the funny thing is, um, you know, sixty eight is just like constantly picking up steam, man. I mean, they just sixty eight. Uh, every time I've seen them, it's like mm-hmm. it's a spiritual experience. Like sixty eight are cra- like Josh Scoggin like has rock and roll like in his DNA. Like no oh, matter yeah. what he does, For it's sure. like man, this guy, this dude's just a rock star, man. Like whatever he, he does. And uh, you know, they just got uh, you know they just announced uh, you know every time I die is doing a uh, you know a full US and, and they're yeah. on it with uh, with that band Candy who are actually great too. If you've had an opportunity to to check them out. I am going to be on tour during that tour, and I'm very upset because <laughs> every time I die, 68, and I have seen Candy before with Knock yeah. and they're awesome. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah, I mean, hopefully, who knows, like, man? They're playing like all clubs on that tour. It's yeah, gonna it's going to be a small show. Yeah, they uh, um, they actually, uh, in, in our area, in Orlando, they announced um, two shows, actually. They're going to do two shows back-to-back because I'm sure they're going to gonna oh, sell yeah. out. Yeah, but um, so, I, I, you know, for for what it's worth you you kind of bringing it up about the the new torch bearers right you know bands mm-hmm. like you know knock loose and, and you've mentioned varials you know obviously you've got uh you know, like counterparts and like you know all those bands that are kind mm-hmm. of you know carrying the torch through this new wave of uh of you know aggressive music you know hardcore post hardcore metalcore all that kind of stuff um so it, it's interesting to get to talk to you guys because you guys have a lot of those influences but you guys kind of also call back to like that early 2000s kind of like alternative and uh i'm hearing some of that in uh you know your your first record and even the single that you've put out so um as far as you know jumping from uh you know the 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 first record now to um you know hoping the loss of it being the first one made a fire now what like what kind of changes were you trying to cultivate in the band moving forward to kind of expand your palette essentially I think with um, the first record and the first EP we did, just the formation of the band, uh, our influences at the time, which we just really didn't see anybody around us, like in our region, playing like any sort of like chaotic hardcore music or post hardcore. Uh, sure. We just had like mostly like metalcore and sludge bands. So at the time, yeah. we're like, we want to do something different. And our friend group at the time, we're like, we all like listen to like early 2000s solid state bands. So Sure. Let's make a band like that. Let's do that. And that was fun. And that's, I mean, you listen to our first record, you have those influences in there. Um, but I think coming with our second one, um, there was, we had a lot more time to think about what we wanted to write. I mean, the mm-hmm. first few years of the band, it was just go, 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 DIY touring constantly, like record as fast as you can. Yeah, of course. With the second record, especially with the pandemic and everything, there was just so much more time to sit there and think about, well, what do we want? And as individuals, we all have a lot of different kind of influences. And as you were mm-hmm. saying, like kind of that early 2000s alternative thing, like we grew up listening to bands like, you know, Deftones, Linkin Park before sure. we got into anything. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of, um, or at least you hear a lot more influence of that on our newer album from like some late 90s, early 2000s, like alternative rock, because that, mm-hmm. you know, most of the time, that's what we're listening to is just like rock and roll because sure. we love that kind of thing. And then we're figuring out how to mesh that with our love for chaotic and heavy music mm-hmm. and still keeping those things and marrying them together. I know there's only a couple songs out right now and you got half people going, oh, they're not heavy anymore or they're going a different way or yeah. something like that. And if you listen to our first record, I mean, half the songs on there don't even have screaming and then half do. Yep. So it's like you just got to dive in. And I think our new album has like a really good relationship of having its soft and heavy moments. I mean, we have our softest moment on this album mm-hmm. and we also have our heaviest moment we've ever done on this album. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, the whole um, the whole kind of, um, you know, I, I don't know what to call it, but I guess for lack of a better term, I'll, I'll call it the whole bullshit of like, you know, are like artists changing and adapting and evolving and growing up essentially mm-hmm. and, and changing what you write and you know fans having problems with it i mean like that like 
it's kind of like passe. Like, you know, I, I, I kind of understood it or I shouldn't say understood it, but like I, I, the, the pushback, you know, like when I was younger, I guess like came with the fact that I was younger, right. You know, if I was in my Uh early twenties, I didn't really put two and two together. I wanted to hear the same record eight times. And, you know, but nowadays, I mean, like, look at like, just, just to, just for some bands, just, just to point them out. Right. So let's look at deaf heaven. Right. So, I mean, they were literally a, like a black metal meets like post-rock band. And then this record, they're just like a shoegaze band. And I mean, this record, I, I, if, if you're a Deaf Heaven fan, I don't know. There might be some I've people heard out there. I, I do enjoy them. Yeah. I think it's crazy mm-hmm. what they do. Yeah. Um, I have, I've heard their first album, which is like the pink covered one. Sunbather. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Po- post that, I maybe have heard a few songs, yeah. but I, I do like that first album. And, and, and they're great, but they've, they've, like a lot of bands, have transitioned to something different. And, you know, a lot of people have some issues with it, but I mean, mm-hmm. you know, at the same time, you, you, you kinda... still have that record to listen to, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it's, like thing it's not going us. away, right? Yeah. If you want to listen to like what you dug about us before, we have over an hour worth of music for you to yep. check out. Exactly. But, you know, to just, you know, to think like, uh, you know, a band like, like even the Deftones, like, you know, they changed with, with every record, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you could sit there and be like, uh, you know, Minerva, you know, and then the self-titled record. I mean, it's not around the fur. It's not this. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but like you can't expect, you know, alternative musicians to create the same thing. And, and really, you can't expect that of anyone, even pop musicians. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, it's you just can't. It's, it's an art. I mean, some people are there to maybe keep making the same thing or please the audience. But mm-hmm. to me, at least when you go to a concert um, and that's how most music i think should be viewed you should go check it out live and really get down to what it's about Absolutely. you're watching these artists perform their art in front of you or you're listening to them yeah. perform their art and it might not be what you initially fell in love with mm-hmm. but i mean that's them showing their art and you don't have to enjoy it and mm-hmm. i mean there's no reason to really go against it i mean um like i said under oath is a really big influence of mine sure. um i wasn't crazy about the album they came back with um but I feel like they really enjoyed making it. And yeah. there's obviously a lot of people who like it out there. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, people got to grow and change. And I think for them, that was a move. They were like, we don't want to make the same record again. And yeah. they took the risk. And I think for them, it paid off for them. And, and um, you know, I, whenever we talk about Under Oath, it's just, um, it's always funny to me to talk about um, their, you know, how they were perceived in the, in the you know, the early 2000s as a, uh, you know, as a Christian hardcore band, you know, mm-hmm. which every band on solid state, every band on solid state. And the other thing about that is like, and you can kind of think about if it's debatable to begin with. I mean, like, you know, it's almost like a band mentions something that is, you know, that's religious and all of a sudden you get pegged as a religious band. Right. So mm-hmm. for under oath, you know, on their only chasing safety, you know, you know, Jesus, I'm ready to come home. And all of a sudden, like, okay, you know, these guys are, you know, there's yeah. nothing secular about them. But like, in reality, it's like, you know, I don't really know. And then they come back with that, you know, that first record back. And like, the first track, I mean, they drop like the most emphatic F bomb, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I felt like with that, um, they were like, well, we don't care anymore about, you know, alienating our audience. We want to create what we, feel is right for us and that was probably something that was a little bit scary for them but also probably really cathartic you know just like hey we we want to do what we want to do yourself on that one i mean it was probably like that's one thing i think you can do as as an artist that i mean is going to separate you and i mean do what you want to do don't go based on what the audience wants because all in the back of their heads they knew the safe move Mm -hmm. but i mean they went and took the ladder and like we're going to use a pop producer Yep. And we're going to make all our own record and do it a completely different way than we have that has for sure. worked for success in the mm-hmm. past. And we're just going to take a risk, which, again, big props. That's I mean, it takes balls to do something like that. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Let's uh, let's let's try this. Let's see if Mikey works now. Can I you can... hear me now? Yes. No? Yes. yes, sir. Oh, good. Awesome. Because I wanted to jump in because you do mention how. Um, you know, under oath worked with a pop producer. You guys kind of did the same working with John from point North. Yeah. So like, you know, he's leading that new wave of pop punk, I guess. So 
you know, why did you guys decide to work with him when uh, you guys were doing this follow up album? I knew um, uh, the vocalist of the band, Gary, um, he knew of John and he had been in communication with John. And he's also a really um, big fan of his band, Point North. And if y'all haven't checked them out, they're really cool. So good. Um, but he just kind of knew him from that experience and started being in communication with him. And then it was just the right. There was a couple of people in mind, I know, initially at the beginning and ended up going with him just because the vibe was right on him. And as far as I can tell from him and Colby, I mean, the whole experience was really good. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I love what Point North is doing right now, especially since, you know, Tom and I are older dudes and it, it's cool to see the new uh, direction that pop punk's going in. It's true. Yeah, cool. it's cool. So, I mean, go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, like, it's it's good to see pop punk going in a good place. That's what, like, that was my bread and butter as a kid. And to see it, like, being still cultivated to the masses is a rad thing. Yeah, and then also earlier on, you, you mentioned how you, you couldn't uh, catch one of the tours as they were coming through town because you were going to be out on tour. So has that mm -hmm. been announced yet? Are we getting that soon? Yeah, yeah. So uh, that has been announced. We're doing, uh, I think, three weeks about with uh, Earth Groans, another band on Solid State, um, all through November. I'm pretty sure it starts November 4th in Nebraska. So all the Nebraska homies, watch out. But um, yeah, we're going to be going out with Earth Groans three weeks. And um, all those dates are on all our social medias everywhere, ticket links and all that. And that's going to be mainly like Southwest, West Coast dates. Awesome. So how, how does that work starting a tour in Nebraska? You guys got to just like trek in. I'm, I'm assuming that's got to be like a 12 to 14 hour drive at least. I'm pretty sure it's a 21 hour drive. Yeah. But oh, my God. We're playing a couple of <laughs> shows. Uh, we're doing a couple of headlines on the way there that are cool. being put together. And same thing on the way home, because I'm pretty sure the last date's like south dakota and that's a long drive home oh my so god so i think i think we're playing like two dates on the way home too just to break it up but i mean there's been times where we're like <laughs> you know we haven't got shows booked we're like well tour ended in portland oregon it's a 58 hour <laughs> drive home let's just Oof. keep taking turns sleeping and do it straight yeah. damn that's crazy man it's just uh now is this like um like the first time that you guys have uh like toured in those like kind of I guess not as big market states like you know, Nebraska and all that kind of stuff. Or um, we've hit some like B and C market um, before for sure. Okay, it just depends on the tour. Um, I know one we did like right before um, the pandemic happened with Wolves at the Gate. A lot of that was oh, wow. like some, some Midwest places, um, cool. like Missouri, a lot of Ohio dates. Um, we've done South Dakota before and it's like, I, I think, I mean, the shows to me there like are sometimes better, if not the same as like a major market, because like there's almost nothing to do in these small towns. Yeah. And when you have, uh, you know, an act come through, especially one with some energy, people are like, this is something to do on a Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. So, um, I actually look forward to playing these like weird places that you wouldn't hear about or something like let's play uh, rapid city south dakota like yes i've never been there before I've ne like that's awesome i i am so about playing like the c market places that nobody hears about i guess find like the people and usually what happens is a lot more interesting than i don't know i've kind of you know atlanta is always fun but it's uh there's a little yeah. bit of an expectation almost because yeah. you know what to expect mm -hmm. no I, I i definitely definitely understand that and uh uh, but it is cool, yeah, like just like you were saying, to get to, you know, kind of experience these cities and towns that you might normally not get to. And you get to, you know, like expose your music to a different audience that, you know, maybe doesn't get shows very often. So, yeah, you know, the difference in playing, you know, your Atlantas or your New Yorks, your Bostons and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but um, so I'm, I'm kind of interested to hear uh, kind of the story about how you guys ended up linking up with Solid State now based on the conversation we had and how important solid state and, you know, tooth and nail was to you. Um, it probably was like unbelievable that you guys got to link up, I think. So uh, share oh, a little yeah. bit of that story. Yeah, please. 
So um, we started the band, like I said, we were all really big fans of other bands on the label. Um, mm -hmm. Me and the vocalist, uh, we grew up Christian. Um, so that was just like, you know, we had already been listening to a lot of those bands based on that. Um, and I mean, we had Solid State in our minds just because, you know, so many bands we enjoyed were on the label, but we sure. really didn't think it was something that could happen or was obtainable. We we're just like, this is in the back of our heads. Like if at one point we get big enough to like ask a label or send a label something, eventually we'll go mm -hmm. with Solid State. Just that that was our first pick from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um so we just honestly kind of forgot about it and we were just touring our asses off DIY, yep. sure. just eating the dollar menu every night. I mean, we're still yep. eating the dollar menu every <laughs> night, but now we have a trailer. That's the only difference. There you go. So we have more room to sleep. More room to sleep. Yeah, you go. <laughs> but um, yeah, we, uh, we were just touring a lot. We ended up uh, striking up a tour with Death Therapy, which is um, Jason Wisdom from like Becoming the Archetype, his other band. And they're on solid state. And um, we did like a week with them. And that gave us grounds to, um, uh, I was literally just a madman. I would send like a thousand emails a day just asking to tour with bands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you get um, 999 no's and somebody said yes. Yeah. And uh, one of those emails was to speak of wolves, who are another band on solid state. And we were able to tour with them because of us touring with death therapy. And after that tour, I guess that kind of put us on Solid State's radar. Um, okay. Like I said, we never hit them up or anything. Um, I guess they checked us out. We had like an EP and a music video out. And um, they hit us up and talked to them for a couple days. And they just offered us a deal. Um, I mean, like I said, we're on the road a lot. So, I mean, that may have been appealing to them, a band that wanted to get out there and do it and that's all we wanted to do we just wanted to have somebody behind us who wanted to work with us and sure. we wanted to be out as much as we could but it was just kind of out of nowhere to us and to that happen or for that to happen to us was just crazy because like why like being in middle school and watching under oath devil wears prada normie jean music videos and like your teacher yelling at you to get off your computer because <laughs> like that's what you're doing instead of your schoolwork, and then to be like yeah. oh I have a record contract from this label now. Um, it's it's just surreal. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, at this point, I could you know stop playing music tomorrow, and I my expectations of what I've done fulfilled, yeah. already went past. Because I mean, as a kid who was like a big Solid State Tooth and Nail fanboy, to be a part of that you know family and community is crazy. Because the fan base is you know they're so nice. It's like a, a cult following with it, as you guys know. For sure, and it's yeah. so warm and welcoming. And then the entire staff is amazing. Our team is incredible. And then all the other bands on the label are awesome. It's all like, like no matter what, it's like it's seemingly like every band on Solid State, like everybody's just friends with each other, no matter what. Like that's awesome. for whatever reason, Solid State just signs rad, friendly bands, <laughs> and that's been the thing for like twenty years. Yeah, uh, that's very true. So I mean, that, that's an awesome story, man. And I, I, you know, I appreciate you sharing it with us. I just, uh, you know, that's one of the things that you know, when I was a musician, like I always, um, you know, dreamed about, you know, being in that band that gets signed to like that label that means so much to you, you know, for me, it, it would have been vagrant records, you know, like that would have been oh, yeah. the they label that I would have been. Stuff. Yeah. But, um, so just to kind of make a little bit of a smooth transition, we'll start talking a little bit of pens, but, uh, so you guys ended up having a track on songs from the penalty box, uh, which was like, uh, you know, volume eight, which is, I guess the one that you guys were on, which is the newest one, but I mean, going way back, uh, when they were doing songs from the penalty box, you know, back in the early 2000s, I mean, like, you know, there were all the heavy hitters and stuff on there. So I guess, um, uh, you know, being on that comp uh, as a hockey fan, was it kind of like a little cool nod to like, oh, this is cool. Like, you know, the hockey and music, you get to kind of, you know. Wait, you're saying we were on a comp? Oh, yeah, man. I'm pretty sure you were. Oh, weren't, I was weren't on, you on? That, that's awesome if we were. I don't know if we were. <laughs> Yeah, no. So, um, so Tom tooth... makes up stuff. So who, no, who I'm not making no this. I'm not making up. So, uh, so tooth and nail, uh, technically, you know, vis-a-vis -vis solid state put out mm. a, uh, a comp called songs from the penalty box. Uh, and, uh, uh, it was uh volume eight, which is, I guess the newest one, but mm. yeah, you guys are on it. Uh, slow death That's... by fluorescent lighting is oh, on it. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> good song yeah, to play I mean, hockey too <laughs> hell yeah man but yeah you guys are on there with you know wolves of the gate demon hunter 
you know, Devil Wears Prada, Lightworkers on there, Fit for a King, you know, Oh right. Sleeper too. Yeah, so it, it's uh, it's super cool. Uh, but um, I just kind of pulled it up on um, on uh, on Spotify. It looks like it they did it last year at some point, but it might have been one of those things that it was kind of like a slow burn, didn't have much oomph to it. It doesn't seem like it, but um, and I, let's I did just fact check Tom. It, you guys are on it because yeah. Tom okay. will make <laughs> Tom right. does make stuff up on right. here all the time. <laughs> I, it's you know sometimes you got something it. good to make up. I'm flattered by it. You gotta you gotta keep you gotta keep the audience engaged. You know sometimes you gotta keep them on their toes. If they're not listening, you gotta just throw out like a you know. Anyways, so you know Michael Jordan is back with the New York Rangers. It's great. Uh, but yeah, keep man, let's so, I like it. So let's 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 talk pens a little bit, man. So um, let's hear the story about how someone from Myrtle Beach ends up being a Penguins fan. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm born, raised Steel City, Pittsburgh till I was 13 years old. Then I moved down here. So that's all I knew. I grew up playing hockey. Uh, my front tooth is fake from a hockey fight hey. <laughs> um, on my bottom mouth. Um, and then when I moved down here, they didn't have it anymore. So I kind of picked up the drumsticks instead. Sure. But um, yeah, I mean, I was just born in Pittsburgh and um, not really into any other sports, honestly, but I was just always super avid about hockey. I mean, it was a, the chaos. You can fight each other. Um, it's just awesome. Hell yeah. So, Ian, I definitely want to hear more about that, but we do have to do a quick ad read from our sponsors at DraftKings. So we're going to do that real quick, and then we're going to dive into more of your uh, Penguins history. Let's do it. Week two of football is in the books, and now it's time to review the tape and get ready for week three with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. To kick off another action-packed week, DraftKings has given new customers $150 instantly when they bet $1 on any football game. Listen up, because you don't want to miss this. Head to DraftKings Sportsbook app now and place a bet of $1 on any Week 3 game to receive $150 in free bets instantly. If Sportsbook is not yet available in your state, DraftKings still has huge cash prizes up for grabs all season long with their daily fantasy contests. DraftKings has given all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total cash prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code THPN to receive $150 in free bets when you place a $1 bet on any football game. That's promo code THPN this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older in New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. All right, perfect. So, Ian, you mentioned earlier that you are 23 years old. So your Penguins fandom must be strictly like Sidney Crosby era Penguins. Is that (laughs) correct? That's why, I mean, as far back as I can remember when I started going to the games, like, he, he was the man. I mean, I know Lemieux is the absolute GOAT. He's a legend, and I love watching his reels. But and I, he wasn't on my radar till probably I was, like, 15 or 16. But as a kid, like, like Sid the Kid, I mean, he's incredible. I mean, every, uh, I mean people want to hate all they can, but any team in the NHL would like to have him on his team. It's amazing what he does. Yeah, and he really, like, saved the franchise because, you know, the NHL was going into its lockout in, like, 2004, 2005. The Penguins were at the bottom of of the league. They weren't doing so great. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that, like, there were still arena questions. And if I'm wrong, I, I might just be, like, missing a few years here or there. But I vividly remember once they drafted Sidney Crosby, like season ticket membership went through the roof. And I remember like NBC or one of the main networks showing like Sidney Crosby actually going around in the city of Pittsburgh, hand delivering season tickets to their fans. Yeah, I, a, I, I'll I never forget that. that like, that's I, awesome. yeah. Yeah. So, you know, 
it, it is crazy how one or two players can can save a franchise and you know he was things a showman, it, man he was a spectacle i mean you went to see him yeah. play because he was that good mm-hmm. it's very true yeah and and honestly you know we kind of had that with john tavares things didn't pan out the way that we hoped mm-hmm. as islander fans but you know before we drafted him you, you know things were really doom and gloom there were still talks that the islanders could be relocating and then all of a sudden we draft this superstar and and you know, here we are playing two years in a row in the Eastern Conference Finals. It, it's and crazy. Y'all kicked our butts in the playoffs. <laughs> Pretty I, upset I do about wanna, that. I yeah. do want to talk about that because it's like, dang, man, the Islanders. What's up, man? But y'all, I, credits do where credits do. Y'all, y'all earned it. Yeah, and you know, the past couple of years, you know, we we took down the penguins and who would have ever thought that that would be a reality <laughs> like right i, I, I was that. super surprised i was like come on we're gonna get stanley cup third year in a row let's do it and <laughs> yeah. then islanders coming in man yeah but uh, you know the the real thing that stood out to me from that series was the goaltending man like mm-hmm. jari just didn't have it this year at all no he didn't i re my thing is I'm kind of confused. I mean, he did get some hate, but um, oh dang, I'm totally drawing a mental blank on the goalie the Pens traded that I loved. Um, Flurry? Irish dude. No, not Flurry. They did trade him. Uh, he was the younger guy. He was Irish. He was like 21. Murray? Yeah, Matt Murray. They had him for um, they had him for two Stanley Cups, and then they traded him to the Senators, and I really liked his goaltending. I thought he was great. As much hate as he got, I think he was a pivotal player in like the new lineup of the team. But they didn't have him for it. Yeah, it's um kind of interesting to look at uh you know this upcoming year for the Pens is really kind of gonna be what a lot of you know a lot of people are saying is really gonna be like the last year of this contingent of the the, the penguins right because you've got after this year i think uh malkin carter latang a couple of other guys are all are all ufas yeah um so you know and but what the other thing you got to consider though is you know malkin's 35 crosby's 34 you know, like latang i think is 35 or something mm-hmm. too jeff carter is like 37 or something so it's an old kind of an old team you know so for it's sure. going to kind of be interesting to see what in what direction the Penguins go, right? So, like, you know, do you just kind of, you know, let all of this older talent kind of just offload? You know, you still got Crosby on contract for another, I think, three years or something, right? So, like, do you just kind of let, you know, guys like Latang and Malkin go to, you know, see where they can get one or two year deals because they're up there in aging, Mm-hmm. and rely on, you know, the depth that you have or trying to find, you know, strong uh, replacements for them that are a little bit younger, uh, you know, in free agency. What do you see? And I mean, of course, all of that is contingent upon really how the Penguins are, are able to to perform this year. But, you know, going into a, a, a kind of a serious rebuild, potentially, where do you think they're going to go? Do you think they're going to try to Resign Malkin and kind of roll with him, and uh, you know the same with with Latang maybe, or are they gonna like kind of just blow it up and try to try to build something new? I think um, with the strong suit for them, like honestly, almost for the past ten years, I think they're just the team itself with the core players is just really tight. Like beyond just being like, hey, I play in a hockey team with you. Like mm-hmm. I think it's tighter than like you know being friends, going out, hanging out with these people. Yeah. And we're talking about like 10 plus years. Some of these people have known each other and been playing on the team. Absolutely. So I just think like the vibe and actually how they play together is so tight mm-hmm. that, you know, if you were to kind of fully take it away, you have a whole new team almost. I mean, when you have, you know, Crosby, Malkin, Latang, Hornquist, uh, Flurry, Murray, who are on a team together for like yeah. five years or something. And for then sure. you start separating, it, you know, at, at some point it is a different team. I think the best thing they could do would be to keep, you know, some of these older guys like Malkin, Crosby, and Latang on there, you mm-hmm. know, as long as you can and just kind of, you know, train any of the new guys you have coming in. Yeah. But I think with what they're going to have, realistically, my gut's telling me 
like within the next couple of years, it's just going to be a completely different lineup, and I don't know what to expect, which yeah. kind of scares me because my pride's gotten pretty high over the last 10 years of them playing. For sure. And my mouth might be too big for what they're about to do in the next couple of years. Yeah, but the, the crazy thing to look at, man, is, I mean, if, let's say, they end up letting Malkin and Latang you know, test free agency and they get deals elsewhere. I mean, like that's a big blow to the club for sure, but that's also like almost like 20 million in cap space, man. And you know, the way the NHL is, I mean, yeah. like, you know, if you have a, I mean, Lou Lamariello of the Islanders is, or Lamarello or whatever. Mm -hmm. I always add way too many more, uh, <laughs> it's Italian syllables <laughs> than I should, but that's okay. I like syllables. Uh, but, um, but Lou is a GM is one of those GMs who, mm -hmm. it, you know, can take 10 million cap space and stretch it. Right. So, you know, having 20 million available, you know, if just, you just in that much letting two guys go, or, and I'm sure it's not 20 months, maybe like 19 or something, but mm -hmm. even at that, the amount that you could do with that and, you know, the penguins still, I mean, you know, without Malkin and Latang, I mean, like I said, you're still playing with Sidney Crosby, who is undoubtedly, no matter what you want to, say about him in terms of like who he is as a player he's like a tom brady of hockey yeah, he's, he's still like one of the best really hockey good. players so you know you might be able to entice some people to to come over there you know and and don't sleep on rust man i i feel like rust is an underrated superstar in the nhl mm -hmm. right now yeah mm -hmm. and yeah i mean and, and and you know they've got you know uh what's his name um gensel right and Oh, here's where Tom's gonna just make up people on the Penguins roster. <laughs> no, I mean, like, just I get I words got... with a lot of syllables that yeah. aren't vowels. Those I think I got, I think I got at least two of them right, because I, I know for a fact that Gensel and Kapanen are on the team. Mm -hmm. And you said Rust, and that reminded me that Rust is on the team. But other than that, I couldn't tell you. But I know that they're, you know, like they're under thirty guys who are gonna be essentially who the team is probably built around. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it's you know the Tristan Yari thing. I mean. Uh, you know, he had a little bit of a rough postseason. It's going to be interesting to see how he bounces back. But um, well, some, some of their games are weird. I mean, it's like when they like almost like in like even some of the preseason stuff, it's like, what are you guys doing? And then they'll go on an eight game win streak and just be insane. Yeah. So yep. it's really it's almost like a timing thing. I felt like that when we were, you know, playing y'all in the playoffs a couple of years ago. I'm like, we have been wiping the floor for months and then we get in this with the Islanders, and but you know we were the ones who got the floor wiped with. Yep, yep, yeah. And but, I just wanted to comment, like we mentioned, how Jari wasn't wasn't the the best player in those playoffs, but like Tanev stood out to me as being like a physical force that really like got into the Islanders' heads. And then mm -hmm. he just got scooped up by Seattle in the expansion draft. Like I feel like that is an, you know, a, a blow to the team that maybe people don't realize is, is as important as he was. A lot of the trading and drafts that have happened the last, like I haven't honestly been happy with any of it, like the last two or three years on it. I uh, guess a lot of the decisions, like, you know, I, maybe it's monetary based or something like that, or even the player, or, you know, another team just has more budget to get that because they saw the talent in them. But I'm just like, dang, these are not good moves. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and wait, I just want to just ask, did you see Tanev's um, Seattle Kraken team photo yet? Oh, no, I have not. So I have not. So, so like yeah, his, post him leaving the pens, I really haven't kept up. Yeah. So like he, he's known as like having this really amazing Pittsburgh Penguins like roster photo where he's just like, <laughs> like, just like, like he saw a ghost. Yeah. And he recreated it with Seattle. So, oh, that's great. I'll have to check that out. For oh, it's sure. so funny. Yeah, so he's funny. just like, <laughs> I'm here like, for it, man. Don't take it's it so, all too serious. It's so wild, man. It really is. But, but you know, um, it's, Seattle's going to be one of those teams. I guess let's, you know, I, I, we we can kind of chat about them a little bit just because we brought them up. Uh, but you know, I, I don't know if well, you had the if, opportunity. That's where Solid State is, right? Yeah, yeah, they're based out of Seattle. Yeah, they're based out of Seattle. So, yeah. are those dudes pumped about getting a team? Have you brought that um, up? I don't think I've talked to anybody at Salt State about hockey. I mean, <laughs> uh, our A and R lives in Colorado, and he's like our point of contact. Mm -hmm. And um, don't think he's too into hockey. But I'm gonna yeah. have to next time where I we'll be in Seattle and uh, Washington. We'll probably stop by like the Tooth and Nail place. I need to ask those guys. Be like, well, and yeah. also ask guys them like, like hockey. 
they must if they put out a comp that's called songs from the penalty box and like it's a hockey yeah. themed comp so there's got to be someone that is a hockey fan there yeah it's got someone who's not telling me about it yeah right <laughs> yeah right that's, that's, it's, it's such a bummer and you know it's funny we um i think we tried to reach out to a uh, solid state um to try to talk to them about seeing if like someone was uh a hockey fan on their crew and we you know we didn't get a response back from them you know nothing no no shade or anything i get it mm -hmm. you know sometimes it happens but um you know if you're out there and uh you know you get that response just you know send us a message and be like this is the guy you know this is the guy yeah. that you need to reach out to there's somebody the in there who is an avid hockey there fan i'll figure it out is. and and but it's cool though because uh you know the pacific northwest um just you know getting another hockey team is great you know because mm -hmm. uh, you know vancouver is just a, you know, a big hockey town evidenced by like, you know, I, I remember very vividly uh, when they covered the Rangers winning the cup, they also covered like the entire city of Vancouver, just like burning it to the ground, yeah. you know? So like, I, I remember that very vividly, uh, but there's a lot of passion over there. So I'm hoping that that kind of passion echoes in Seattle. Um, but the thing with like expansion teams is you just never really know, you know, on paper, right. You look at the Kraken's team and you're like, oh, I don't really know, but a lot of people, you know, were saying that about the Golden Knights and the Golden Knights ended up being a contender like right off the bat. So I'm here for the underdogs, man. I right. want that. Like I want them to do as well as they can. I mean, I, um, a couple years ago when um, Pens were playing the San Jose Sharks in the Stanley yeah. Cup, dude, mm -hmm. it was such a good series. It like, was. I mean, and I was not expecting that from them. And they made me a fan of the team after that. I was like, y'all played hockey fantastic mm -hmm. the entire yeah. series and it it made it so much more interesting i don't want to see just one team dominating another i want to exactly. see a good game of hockey and i think that's why a lot of like hockey purists either love or hate the islanders right because um people that love the game of hockey even if they're not islander fans will appreciate the islanders because they are really just that they're a, a group of of you know really non superstars that play like a very specific game of hockey. It's very chippy. It's very defense oriented. Um, but you see like little flashes of you know, real greatness on that team. But like, you know, if you're a hockey fan that really likes like flash and like all that kind of superstar kind of stuff, you're not going to get it really with the Islanders other than mm -hmm. Matt Barzell. But um, you know, I, at the same time, I think that uh, the Islanders are a lot of fun to watch, even if you're not an Islander fan, just because of the kind of hockey they play. And that was ev evidenced in this past postseason, you know, watching them play, uh, you know, Tampa Bay and taking Tampa Bay pretty much to the limit, as good of a team as they are. So uh, it's always super cool. And, you know, the, the Penguins, I think, have the capability to, you know, kind of eventually get away from the whole, like, you know, Crosby as the linchpin and start to develop a team mm -hmm. that's more, you know, I think they kind have, of... I think solidly as a team, the Penguins can be there because we're talking about within the next five years, Crosby's not going to be there anymore. Yep. yep we're just being sure. realistic. Um, I think the potential is there, certainly, especially like under the right leadership as those guys bring these guys up in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I'd like to see, honestly, because I mean, it does get annoying when you're a Pens fan and you're like, oh, I'm a Pens fan. And then immediately the shit talk about Crosby and Malcolm starts. Yeah, of course. And so it'd be nice to for them to be able to carry themselves without those guys and, you know, still be a force to be reckoned with. So uh, it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's all but apparent, you know, that once Crosby decides to, you know, hang the skates up, 87 is going up into the rafters. Uh, oh, absolutely. Do we think, uh, do we think Malkin gets up there as well? Um, I think there's a chance. Um, I would personally, I mean, talking to a boy from Pittsburgh, so I'm biased to saying, yeah, he is going to mm -hmm. be up there. But, I mean, I think you throw his name out to anybody who watches hockey. I don't know who he is. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe maybe past that, your casual fan might not know the individuals like that. But, you know, I think he's right behind Crosby when you're going to, you know, at least in modern day, going to mention a penguin. Mm -hmm. For what, sure. do you, what do you think, Mikey? I'm just kind of interested in, in what your, your take on that would be. I don't know how it is in, in Pittsburgh. Like, I, I don't know how many numbers are up in the rafters. I think that will determine it. Because, like, if you think about the Islanders and and who's up in the roster in the rafters, like, it's pretty much the the 
the four, you know, the guys that were there for all four Stanley four Cups. Cups. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, if you're if you're talking that way, like Crosby and Malkin were there together for those Penguins Cups. So like, yeah, sure. You know, and they were huge parts of it. So I I could see him getting up there as well for sure. Yeah, and and that kind of you know that leads to that discussion, which we'll have another day of like who the next Islander to go up there is. You know, a lot of people are saying it could be Josh Bailey. I, I would know. love it, but <laughs> we'll see. So, um, all right. So, just um, kind of ex- expounding upon um, what your expectations for this season are. Um, you know, as far as you know, some of the younger guys, you know, the, the older guys. Um, of course, you're looking to see a cup get raised because that's what every hockey fan wants. But, like, what are your expectations of this season? Do you think that? Um, you know, the front office is going to try to go out and, and, you know, get some, some extra parts, or do you think there's a trade that could be happening? What do you think the Penguins need to, to really be contenders this year? Honestly, I think like, I think they're going to have a solid season. I'm all, at least in the last five years, I've been happy watching them every time. And then Mm -hmm. when playoff time comes around, they either go straight through it or, you know, completely blow it. But honestly, I think the biggest thing, for them this year is like whoever can be their most solid goalie. Cause after I've just had goalie issues with them, even like with, you know, Matt Murray at certain times and then post who they're putting in, um, they just need to have their goalie super solid and they just really work on offense and get that to the biggest thing that they can. Um, one thing that I've been disappointed watching in the last few years is I just feel like the whole team aspect of working on their offense, like it could just be a lot more, it could could be more better than what I saw at like say 2017, 2018. And that could be due to, you know, they are drafting and taking people away and the lineup being changed. But just, I felt like what has worked for them in the past 10 years has been that team mentality of like it being stronger than just playing on a team with somebody and really knowing those guys. But, I mean, we'll see. I think they're going to have a solid season. But, um, you know, who can tell? Um, Hopefully, just in the playoffs, they're able to hold it together. But if we burst the Capitals, you know, that's kind of like our strongest (laughs) suit every time we're going into the playoffs. It's like that's who gives us the most trouble for sure. Now, I do want to just talk specifically about you, like, being a hockey fan in Myrtle Beach. Because... Myrtle Beach, you know, it's it's very similar to like Charlotte. There's tons and tons of transplants. So like there oh, yeah. are there's I mean there's Steelers bars, Pittsburgh bars all over town. It's crazy. Yeah, so like do you get together with other penguin fans and and, and like go to these bars? <laughs> so I am the only peng- like my family who all lives here, you know, we're all from Pittsburgh. So we are and we watch the games, but really don't have any i have friends who are friends of other hockey fans but i'm like the only dude who's a pens fan you know of my friend group so it's uh a lot of me just um going somewhere and watching the pens game on a big tv but um i mean anytime like it's the playoffs or something like that you know it's going to be family watching and um i'm like three hours from charlotte so anytime the pens are playing the hurricanes or i think that's raleigh actually but anytime yeah, raleigh. I them, um i've gone and gone up there and watched them play and because i mean you can't get better than watching it like straight up and if i can go to like college hockey or minor league i love going to that too because those dudes are hungry and they're playing even harder than like the nhl dudes yeah and i don't know if they still have a team but i know that myrtle beach did have like an east coast team for a while i think like- the call it we there's as of right now, uh, Coastal Carolina has a team, um, and they practice down in Charleston. There's, I mean, I would play rec hockey if we had it here, but we don't have any sort of ice rink or anything. And um, playing it on ice compared to roller, I'm stubborn, man. I want to play it on the ice. I like the inertia. If you fall, you keep sliding. I'm not a big <laughs> fan of getting hit in the asphalt. Yeah. Because um, there's like two or three roller hockey teams that um, practice and play here. But playing out in the sun on roller skates in Myrtle Beach with the humidity, it's a different kind of game. Yeah, I know um, yeah. The, um, there's an EC, ECHL team, I think, in, like, Charleston. Yeah, the um, Stingrays. 
Yeah, but that's probably like about a hundred miles from you. I don't know. Have you ever had had an opportunity to scoot over there and catch a game yet? Um, I haven't watched them. I did watch. I just watched a scrimmage game in Charleston before at the Charleston um, Coliseum. Um, but that's it. I don't think I've seen them before. Which I'll have to look into that because, like, for me, like, yeah, I'm a huge Pens fan, but I just like watching the game of hockey. I was talking to my friend about that. I was like, let's just go watch the Hurricanes play when they play again. I was like, they don't have to be playing the Pens because, like, their first season yeah. game let's just go because like i haven't seen a hockey game in two years for sure man and so and it's always a blast to go see a hockey game like i said even if it's not a team that you're rooting for i know um uh i think it's actually gonna in about a week or two uh like about 15 minutes away from me in like the downtown orlando area uh they have a big uh, arena called the amway center where like the orlando magic play and uh the uh lightning and the panthers are like having like a essentially like a scrimmage there uh, and oh, tickets yeah. are like super cheap, so I'm thinking of just like scooping some tickets. I don't care really even where I sit, uh, but just yeah. you know, getting to, getting to see a little bit of that would be super cool. So I'm Better I'm kind of looking forward to TV that. For sure. Yeah, right, for sure. And and uh, and and Amway Amway's pretty cool. Like I've been to Amway once or twice. You know, never for anything mm-hmm. sports related. Like I've been there for like some you know wrestling stuff or whatever. But uh, they got some pretty good sight lines, and I'm sure the place is. Uh, would be set up pretty nice for hockey. And of course the solar bears play there who are, you know, an ECHL team. So uh, it's super cool, man. I, uh, you know, any opportunity to get to see some hockey would be, would be super great. So uh, last question, and then we'll kind of wrap this up. I just want to pop it back to uh, ask a one quick music question for you. So, um, you know, you, you talked uh, about Aaron being like one of the drummers that you have, you know, kind of patterned your, your play after, uh, but there have been so many great drummers in like hardcore and, and metalcore. Um, other than Aaron, like, are there other drummers that you kind of find yourself sitting down on a kit and like you'll play a fill and be like, oh, that sounds like this guy? And, uh, you know, like, does it ever kind of like pervade the way you play and sort of like, I, I guess, uh, influence the kind of stuff you do? Any other drummers that might do that for you? Yeah. Um, there's a, there's like a giant gap in like the drummers I like, mm-hmm. um, but um, Aaron's like like I just really enjoy drummers who play with a lot of feel and a lot of power power sure. drumming people yep. call it. Um, but kind of like you know previous to Aaron, which you know also kind of all like it's almost like an evolution um, of who I enjoy. But um, honestly, when I find myself sitting down and like some of the licks and fills I like to play. Um, are going to be, you know, John Bonham of Led Zeppelin, which kind of like started that entire thing. I yep. can't get enough of, I just bought, like he uh, came out with like a new biography from him in September. Dave Grohl was like co-writer on it. Mm-hmm. And so love Bonham. I so many of his fills and everything. I'm still learning. Uh, Keith Moon from The Who. I thought he was absolutely crazy. I love absolutely his, you know, style of drumming. Mm-hmm. Um and then, like I said, Dave Grohl, which is again kind of that evolution. Keith Moon, John Bonham, Dave Grohl, just exactly. one after another of yep. like carrying that torch of you know heavy, you know spastic drumming. Sure. Uh, and so, yeah, Dave Grohl. I mean, he just absolutely kills it. Nirvana. I mean, nothing too flashy, but is then regarded just, as one of the best drummers yeah, ever just for just pocket playing, man yep. playing the drums in the pocket. And that, yep. to me, you know, I'm not be the flashiest drummer in the world. I really just like. I like being a part of the song and serving the song. Mm-hmm. So Dave, for sure. Um, um, a smaller dude, but I feel like his drumming impacted me a lot, especially with Norma Jean, but Daniel Davidson from Norma mm-hmm. Jean, who yeah, also for sure. yeah. played with Under Oath and then also mm-hmm. played with Every Time I Die, which yeah. I think his drumming on Every Time I Die's um, low teens was, I mean, it's it, phenomenal. Like it's a, like a musical instrument in it. And it's like, you listen to, I listen to that album just for the drums almost sometimes like, wow, mm-hmm. that feels crazy. And every time I die, I had a line of good drummers, but damn, yeah. just brought something completely different to that record. Hell yeah, man. Love it. Awesome. So um, real quick, uh, just to lead us out uh, again, if you want to just uh, drop your, uh, your socials and where we can find, uh, uh, you know, all of your new music, of course, again, uh, we've got uh, October 22nd on solid state, uh, made a fire will come out, but yeah, just drop some uh, socials and then we'll uh, introduce everyone to uh, the sweet video you got. Right. Um, my social is Ian 
underscore Moran. It's not Moron, even though that's what all my <laughs> substitute teachers say growing up. But is Ian underscore Moran. Our band uh, socials for anything is just empty is a band. Um, that's all you got to type in. If you type in empty, a lot of other stuff is going to come up. But <laughs> empty is a band is all our socials. All of our music is on Spotify, Apple Music, everything you listen to music on. Uh, we don't have it on cassette yet, sorry, but we'll get it on cassette soon. But anything you listen to music on, Empty is a band. Made of Fire is our new record coming out. We got two new singles off that right now. Close My Eyes and Temporary High. They're live right now. But, awesome. Yeah, pretty much it. We'll be on tour in November. Come check us out. We got tour dates listed online. Hell yeah, man. Ian, thank you so much for taking the time to be on here with us. Thanks for chatting Penn's Hockey, all things empty. And then uh, we will just lead it right out. So uh, we're going to show yeah, you guys awesome. the video for uh, Temporary High, uh, again, on uh, Made of Fire, which will be coming out uh, October 22nd on Solid State Records. So enjoy the video. And Ian, we'll catch you, catch you again on the flippity flop. Yep. Thanks, Ian. Flippity flip. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. Take care, man. Peace. Just when I